Hey, Hormones Balanced community, Magdalena here. Uh, a bit of um, a different kind of a transmission today. We're going to be doing it from a farm in Kauai. And it's not just an organic farm, but it is a bio biodynamic farm. And we're going to talk about the difference. What's the, what, what does that even mean? Um, and the owners have also promised to show us how cacao pot is opened up. And I'm going to show you some cacao nits and how it looks. Most of us have no idea where really chocolate comes from. So this is, I think is really awesome just to see it right from the source. So before we dive in, I'm just gonna do, I wanna just talk a little bit about why I decided to, to do a special segment on herbs at this point. So as many of you, you know, I think most people are interested right now in telling them where to stock up on toilet paper and, hey, give me the tips, like where can I go and get my, you know, my supplies um, <laughs> done or give me a hand sanitizer. And, and I totally get that. And by the way, I just want to give you a heads up. Um, we were supposed to be launching a skincare brand, but that's not going to happen because of obviously the environment and the, and the climate. Uh, but also our manufacturer got shut down. He is not allowed to produce any skincare stuff. However, we shifted gears and we decided to start making hand sanitizers. And so probably by next week, we'll be able to, uh, to get you some. And uh, so stay tuned on that. I'll be, I'll be letting you know what's, what's coming up. Now, the, the reason why we decided to partner up with Kawaii Pharmacy, and so it's not pharmacy as in, you know, as like where you get your drugs, but you get your herbs from, so like F-A-R-M-A-C, right, is because they contain substances that are recently coming out, um, it's becoming very apparent that there are some things in there that could potentially be helping with boosting your immune system, but also regulating um, the, um, the coronavirus. And so the three things I'm going to talk about today is moringa, galangang, and turmeric. Uh, but we're also going to cover a few other things that um, they have at the farm. And so uh, it's, I think it's going to be a really hugely educational piece for you today to learn a lot about um, these herbs, but also how you can incorporate them. And we do have a special promotion that we've got going on until um, the uh, end of next week, sorry, until the 31st of March, so a week from now, from today. Um, and, um, you know, and it's, I'm, I, I just cannot tell you how excited I am. So can I just introduce you to, uh, to the folks and, um, let me just make sure I'm sharing my screen properly. There we go. Hi there, you guys. Aloha. Oh my gosh. How beautiful, how beautiful is the farm? So, um, let me just give our audience a little bit of a sense of context. Um, we were introduced, and I haven't met you yet, but you're very high on the list now of, um, of places to go to visit again, because I have been to Kauai before. Um, we were introduced by a common friends of ours, and many of our uh, readers and audience from Hormones Balance know uh, Dr. Alan Hopkins really well, because him and his wife, the founders, are yourlabwork.com. A lot of you have already ordered your labs through them, so you know him. And so uh, Amy Bath, who is the wife, who's his wife, um, texted me one day. She says, listen, we found this farm. They are absolutely amazing. You're going to be blown away. Can we send you some samples? What's your address? So long and behold, I get a few products sent to me. And, and I will tell you, like the moment I opened the box, one of it was a can of tea. And I opened it up and it was just this this, I think that's where the saying blown away comes from because I literally had to move my head away because it was so incredibly strong. And then, and it was like this vibrancy and life that just popped out of the can, right? And then I opened up the jars with the, the ones that we're gonna be telling you about today, which is like Moringa and a curry blend and the, and the cacao Molena, you know, and, and every one of them, you open it up and it's like, it is so unusual compared to what you get in a commercial store. And so this is where I connected with uh, Doug and I didn't really think we're gonna talk about it much now given that the virus is going on. But then I realized that the compounds and the ingredients and the herbs that are being used in these blends and formulations is exactly what we need right now during this, this time to support ourselves and our health. So we decided to, to meet up with them earlier um, and, and introduce these products to you guys to, to really try them out. Hey, you guys, <laughs> how are you? We appreciate it. Um, well, hello here from Kauai. And um, we are under the uh, lanai of our four acre, in, in the center of our four acre farm. 
biodynamic farm. We grow over 70 different types of plant medicine here um, in, in diverse garden settings. So um, as opposed to the monocrop nature that so often you will see um, herbs grown in and, and crops grown in, we have basically backyard garden style um, plantings um, where we have four to five-ish gardeners out there on a daily basis and three or four herbalists. The tea house that we call it is our place that we cure the herbs and, and make our, and craft our products. That's in the center of the garden. So it's going right from the gardens um, into our tea house and then from our tea house being packaged right on site as well. So when your orders come in, in, in so many cases, they will be shipped um, within, within weeks. And in the case of some of the Moringa, we're harvesting it today. Um, the turmeric, we're in turmeric season right now, ginger, uh, we're in ginger towards the end of ginger season, like kind of the final weeks of ginger season. Um, so it's all being harvested today or a week ago or within, you know, not much time. And the freshness, you know, people, when you open that, that can, you know, one of the things people say, oh, what, why are your herbs so potent? Why are they so balanced so, it, almost sounds like, it almost sounds like a complaint <laughs> what's that? Like, like, it almost sounds like a complaint <laughs> the concept of we don't really know of fresh herbs of fresh herbal medicine yeah. right so when we grew up one of the reasons why maybe herbal medicine didn't have the potency that we um maybe would have liked it to is because the herbs aren't as fresh, aren't as vibrant, aren't grown in diverse gardens, um, and aren't done in a manner that our team produces the 15 or so um, people we have here on the farm that are they're producing uh, the and crafting and gardening the products for you. And I, I want to just share with my audience, you know, when I went through herbal school and I've, I've been exposed to so many different herbs from different suppliers and including ones from Colorado that we get. And I have never ever experienced the kind of freshness that you have. Maybe it's because part of it is the climate in Colorado is also different. But one of the things that I, I would love to share with everyone is like, when you buy stuff online, right? Is the difference is that you were talking about a, a time from the time the plant is picked to the time it reaches the store, you're buying it. It could be as long as eight months. And then that's in just at the store. And if it sits in the store for months, who knows, right? Like sometimes it can be a fast moving good. Sometimes it could be um, just sitting there because it's just, it doesn't have, it doesn't, isn't so popular. It's not a fast moving product. It could be a year before it gets to you, right? And then God knows how long you're keeping it on your shelf. And so, and especially for people who are buying, are buying powdered herbs that are really oxidized so much, um, there is such a big difference, you know, and before, I know you guys have your props and you want to share stuff and let's just show folks also what Moringa looks like. But on that point, just on freshness, you know, one of the things I did with my newsletter, so this is, you know, this is Moringa from, from uh, Mountain Rose Herbs and I'm not bashing them in any way, you guys. I mean, I, I buy shitloads of stuff from them. I really do because this, I mean, they're good, you know, they're a good company, but the reality is that, I mean, they get stuff from all over, all over the world. A lot of times you get herbs from Eastern Europe, from Egypt, from Argentina, because it's much more economical than having a person plucking things here in the United States. Labor is too expensive, right? And so, so this one, um, this is produced in 2009, right? So it was probably picked around that time. And I just want to show you the difference, right? See the difference with the Moringa from these guys here from Kauai Farms. Can you, I mean, and this is not just an aesthetic thing when you go like, oh yeah, well, it's greener. The point of this is that the color in the produce will tell you how much more medicinal value there is in a product from a perspective on chlorophylls, how much more nutrients it has, minerals and vitamins from perspective, anti-inflammatory properties, right? All the things that are working in your body, that is the color will tell a story. So, um, Doc, can we show the real mori the Moringa before it gets oh. all Jenna, just grab some from the garden. So I just clip some from the garden so you guys can see it. Um, this is a young Moringa plant. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. And yeah, and it's just, you could just feel the chlorophyll in this. It's just so profound. Um, you know, Moringa, as we all know, is like packed with micro and macronutrients. It's probably one of the best survival foods on the planet other than honey that I could think of, um, based on the fact that it has all nine essential amino acids that our bodies need and that we don't naturally produce and has like 
such a magnificent amount, the copious amount of nutrition, everything from like high amounts of plant-based protein, bioavailable iron, um, calcium, it's known to have an equal amount of potassium to bananas, twice as much as uh, vitamin C as an orange. So this, this plant definitely makes it into a lot of what we do just based on the nourishing factor alone. You know, a lot of people use um, plant medicine to detox or cleanse, but at the same time, you have to remember to reestablish those nutrients in your body and reintroduce them. So there's a cycle of letting go, releasing, but also replenishing and nourishing. And this plant does that really, really, really well. I want to also mention, you know, Moringa is super popular in India. And so there is, I looked up uh, because my audience likes research. So one of the things I want to share with you, the Department of um, Chemistry and Agriculture in Pakistan wrote that the various parts of the plant from leaves, roots, um, seed, bark, etc., are, and hear this out, right? And there's a long list, anti-tumor, antiparetic, antiphylactic, anti-inflammatory, anti-ulcer, anti-spasmodic, diuretic, anti-hypertensive, -hyper cholesterol-lowering, antioxidant, anti-diabetic, hepatoprotective, so it protects your liver, antibacteria, antifungal activities, are being employed for the treatment of different ailments in the indigenous system of medicine, particularly in South Asia. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. And it purifies water, go figure. Right? And if, you know, my audience are predominantly women in menopause and, and perimenopause and postmenopausal. And so there's another study you guys I have found, they did that study on 92 women who are all in menopause. And it's really quite amazing. Um, they have noticed that they, they have um, everything from glutathione peroxidase. So basically your, uh, your inflammation, uh, sorry, your glutathione. So that's gonna be your ability to reduce inflammation. Yeah, through antioxidants. Retinol, which is your vitamin A as well as serum. Everything went up between 44 to 18%. Uh, went up higher in the, doing that. And so they basically concluded that Moringa is an amazing um, substance for uh, managing the prevention of complications in postmenopause, which basically means lower, lowering the, uh, the symptoms. Absolutely, absolutely. It's also good for um, younger women as well um, for healthy lactation um, and also providing those nutrients to your baby as well. So it helps us in all stages of our lives. I mean, it's a fantastic herb for women. In how, all do you, how do you eat this? So, you know, it comes in a powder, right? So yes. it comes in this wonderful, um, and I love the fact that you guys are using ember glass and nothing gets oxidized. You don't get light coming and damaging uh, the, the, the product. So, so how would you, how much do you consume every day? What's the recommended dose and, uh, and how would you consume it? So what I tell people on our powders really um, is to use it to taste. So, I mean, it's, it's a new concept for people to appreciate like what's their flavor, what's their taste, what, what makes them happy. For some people, specifically like a, the curry powder is a good example of just, you know, a little sprinkle. Um, where something like Moringa, I mean, Jenna likes to use a lot of Moringa and she puts it in almost anything. I, um, <laughs> I typically don't use as much, it's, it's a complete protein. So you're talking about one of the most efficient plants that we have here on the farm as far as nourishment goes. Um, and that, you know, nourishment, when people think about protein and people think about calcium, things that will truly nourish you as, as you look for plants in the garden that you could basically live on this would be one of them right. um, basically every morning we take coconut meat coconut water we blend it in a high speed blender and then um and then here you can see he's adding moringa i also like to add the cacao elena as well so i'm i'm adding a little bit to again to flavor so i think and you can always add more right i mean these these do last a long time um for some and others they last a lot lot less time you you can certainly use it um as a cleansing agent as well it will it will clean the internal digestive tract for sure as well as nourish which is a great combination when you can both cleanse and nourish at the same time it's ideal to have that kind of balance so here i am and i'm just going to stir it in and while and you're doing this i just want to you know also remind our viewers that we one of the things we're working with uh, a lot lately in hormones balance is to lower your inflammation 
and Moringa is anti-inflammatory and that's one of the ways to help your immune system boost it. Yes, there's a lot of things we can do with vitamin D and C and everybody's talking about you know, supplements and stuff like that. But it's also about lowering your inflammation so that your immune system has a break to actually being able to do its work. And this yeah. is, yeah. When you think about inflammation and you think about excess weight on the body, so much of our immune system is being held back from that excess weight, right? That, that inflammation, those to the toxicity that's in the body causing the inflammation. So it's these potent herbs that are going to come in and break up the inflammation, break up the toxicity, break up the acidic, um, the, the, the acids in the body and cleanse them out. As we get rid of that inflammation, our immune system is able to, to grow through, through circulation, through electricity, through, through vitality. And, and when they talk about immune systems, you know, there's, there's like an, a fear, but I think about it as more of a, a power, right? We want to think about about creating as much power from the inside out. And as these herbs go in your body and clean and, and as well as nourish simultaneously, your immune system is being bolstered to the extent that whatever is out there, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual concerns, you don't, you don't resonate with them, right? These, these plants are thriving in this ecosystem, they're thriving in these gardens. What you are receiving is the actual characteristics that these plants have while being in this garden, while they are thriving through a symbiotic relationship amongst one another, you are then receiving that immune system that they've been able to create throughout their life. Oh. And that's what we're finding. You know, the, the science behind it is certainly, you know, impressive. Um, but the more esoteric side of, of receiving the immune boosting components of our gardens, of yeah. our plants, that, that concept is one that I think it's so important for people to start to appreciate because yeah. once your immune system gets to that point, there's no fear. There's truly no fear. Once, once you can actually get your immune system to the point of not letting those emotions in and not letting letting those and i you know i can't speak to them because i don't know what they are um they do not touch my immune system right and they obviously do not touch these plants you can see the colors you can see the the abundance just the vibrancy of it is, is incredible um you guys you turned off your video yeah uh, we're there and uh, hold on uh how do i just Go back. Oh no! Just... There we go. You're back. There we go. We're back. Okay. So, Sorry so Jenna, Jenna, what does it what does it uh, taste like? Uh, volume. Could... What does it taste I like? Lost your volume. Hold on one sec here. Okay. Is there a mute button over here. Can you guys hear me? Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. You there? Are you there? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I see it. Is it that one right there? Yeah. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, we can hear you now. Okay. okay cool. Thank you for your patience. We, we can no talk herb technology on a farm is kind of iffy. No, I'm very impressed that you, you managed to pull it off and do it from the garden. I'm, I'm very thankful <laughs> for that. So what does it taste like when you put it in coconut um, milk and add Moringa to it? What does it taste like? So it has a little bit of a sweet hint. I mean, Moringa it essentially is like a little bit of a sweet bitter to begin with. Um, but it actually mixed with the cacao and the turmeric and the ginger. It's kind of nice little hint, like a little um, hint of the spice in the background as well. So yeah. it's, but very pleasant, very mild. Yeah. Um, we do use a different variety. Uh, we have two different varieties of cacao that we put in the cacao lena. One is the, I'm sorry, the turmeric. Turmeric, right. Uh, one is the, uh, <laughs> you know what I was talking about. Yeah. One is the, uh, Curcuma longa, which is more the Indian variety. It's got that bitter turmeric taste that we're pretty much most familiar with. You can get them in your store or stores nearby. Um, this one is the Hawaiian variety. It's wow, the, it's beautiful. It looks like carrots. It actually tastes like a carrot when you eat it fresh out of the garden. Like uh -huh. when it's this fresh, this was harvested this morning. Yeah. Um, it has that crunch like a carrot. Yeah. As it doesn't have that bitter. It's yeah. quite, 
it's amazing. So you know what I did was I, I used, so we are talking about, so this one is in cacao Elena. So the cacao and the uh, turmeric is in here. And so let's pop open, like we promised the cacao pot in a second, but I just want to show you, you know, what I did was I basically used, hey, you guys, I just want to show you my simple recipe. I use Artisana's coconut because I don't, I don't have fresh one here, right? And I don't like using can. So I use Artisana's one, just the cacao uh, butter and then hot water, a touch of honey and a one teaspoon of cacao Olena and that's the outcome. And it's just like your golden tea and it tastes absolutely fabulous. All right, so, so do you wanna tell us what you guys are doing? So I just took this off the cacao tree. We have about 25 cacao trees on the farm. Um, when our cacao hits the mainland, it's probably the, the most raw cacao that you will find and freshest. So in other words, being cured at a very low heat, we cure it at less than 110 degrees and the freshness in which it gets there. So the, the nourishment, the magnesium, the, the manganese that's in our cacao cannot be found anywhere on the planet. This is um, very unique. When, when we do send it to the mainland, it, 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 the, the, the whole magnesium that's in this particular blend, which is about 50% cacao. Um, so it's got the big energy, this cacao Lena, and actually of all our products, it has the most cacao. And then a, a lot of the big roots as well, the ginger and the turmeric that we just talked about. Um, so this bat, this bowl of cacao was harvested this morning. Um, and there's about, what do we got? Six pods here. And then we have a pod here. Um, and then- And then this is what it looks like after it comes out of our solar dehydrators. They're a little bit more concentrated, um, as you can see. So the actual bean and the fruit. So let me show you it in the raw form so you get a little bit of an idea here. Um, yeah. This is with the pulp on. See that fruit, that lovely mm -hmm. yeah. protective fruit? This is packed with vitamin C. This is amazing immune boosting um, fruit medicine right here. If we were to cut it open, as you can see right here, all the beans um, from different varieties, they'll, they'll represent different colors. And as we all know, colors represent antioxidants, right? So um, this beautiful, lovely, deep plum purple um, is our bean inside. And this is packed with all those lovely antioxidants. This is a little bit more bitter. So you have this sweet and you have the bitter. And when dehydrated together, this is how it comes out. We then grind this and inoculate this into our cacao Elena blend and some other teas and other superfood powders that we have as well. So let me ask you this. So what's the difference between roasting cacao and like using it raw, like the way you were doing and dehydrating it only? Great, I, great question. So um, when you're using raw plant medicine or plants in general, um, you're actually gonna be consuming the plant's true integrity, right? What it was intended for. When you heat and you add heat to a plant, you're molecularly changing the structure of that plant. So therefore you're gonna diminish some of those beautiful compounds and those wonderful uh, enzymes that we are all trying to receive, right? So we know that this is incredible magnesium and bioavailable iron, right? So the more I heat it, if I roast it, I'm actually changing that chemistry. And now I'm gonna, instead of receiving the wonderful, you know, our brain is like this receptor of information. This is information, we're feeding our brain this information. So when we get this information, typically this would increase our serotonin levels in our brain. So this would actually be the feel good hormones that we all want to have, obviously. And um, when you start to, roast or get to a certain temperature above and beyond what's considered raw then you can you start to play with your dopamine levels and then you get into things like that high low that we deal with with roasted coffee beans where you're triggered with addictive behaviors where you have to have that fix the same day the next time so you have that high and that crash that high and that crash and then you have to keep feeding that high um, in order to pick yourself back up. But the raw, which is nature's in, you know, offering to us, has everything that we need. 
So we, we tend to try to cure everything in our solar dehydrators um, at less than 100, 110 degrees. And, um, and that helps to keep those wonderful compounds intact. And then we're able to enjoy it in all these wonderful spices and teas and such. And the, I guess the science behind it is as soon as you heat that, that superfood up, point that it goes from alkaline to acidic mm -hmm. and it's like you know coffee raw to me my experience when i eat coffee bean off the coffee tree which is right here i find myself in an alkaline state receiving alkaline vitamins and minerals but as soon as i roast it not am i roasting it but then i'm also um brewing it i'm, I'm, I'm double um cooking it yeah. that's when um it gets that's when it goes to it to an acidic state yeah. and yeah. i get into that addictive like behavior and right um and i'm assuming that by roasting you're also increasing caffeine levels right and that coffee bean and that's part of the reason why we do it um my yeah, I, yeah i find that the caffeine is synonymous with the acidity right so as as the as the heat as the cooking of the bean or roasting of the bean goes up there's more acid created in the superfood. And you can, you know, the theobromide, which is in the cacao pod, um, is not going to be that same caffeine jittery high. It's going to give you a little bit more of a clean kind of energy. Right. And that's kind of what we all really want is just to have a very balanced energy, something that doesn't tax our adrenals. And at the end of the day, we're just collapsing into our beds because totally. we just completely worked ourselves out. So I'm just that's showing, this is you guys that's what the cacao olena looks like so that's the cacao that's not roasted that's raw and powdered and and that comes with turmeric and that's what just now i was showing you in my drink which i'm finishing up my drink because it's so tasty um that's what's what's in it do you guys cheers, Angelina. cheers. hey cheers <laughs> um do you guys want to move over to move to uh the curry blend and tell us what's in it and i'm gonna go and grab my book while you're doing that just show us the ingredients because i think you've got all that laid out on the table and um i just want to show our peeps the recipe that i made yesterday with it so this curry powder um is probably the superfood that jenna and i use the most um it's also pretty popular here on Kauai, as well as with a lot of our following um it's not the typical curry what you think of it it has very few similarities to the curry that you would order in a restaurant or um in you know it's it's very unique in that there's five spices uh, it's a it has a huge um ratio of ginger and turmeric um so that's pretty much at the base the ginger turmeric and the curry leaf are the base of it here are the five herbs that we're talking about but um, just to start with, the ginger and the turmeric are the base of it, and it gives you that huge anti-inflammatory boost, that cleansing, that that grounding of the root chakra, so that um, you know those roots. This is the season for the roots. Oh um, my god, it's so beautiful! This is the galangal, the Thai oh. ginger. Um, we have you know hundreds of pounds of Thai ginger on the farm. Um, so we harvested this and cleaned it this morning it for you all. Beautiful and sculptural and absolutely amazing. And speaking, and speaking to that root chakra, you know, there's the doctrine of signatures in herbalism, right? You know, where the plant looks like what it's good for. And this looks like it would be part of a digestive tract, right? So this is an amazing metabolic herb that's going to help with digestion. And is this Galango or this is, is Galango, this, yeah. this is Galango, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, it's it's consumed. Although yellow yellow ginger kind of has the fame, this one is you know for a biodynamic farm like ours, this one's a lot easier to grow. Although not easy to harvest, it's a it's a huge task. We got kind of our our biggest muscles on the Galango, <laughs> um, and also to process. It's a I mean I you it's know very I, robust. It would take me a lot to kind of um rip this off so it's definitely got some got some power and strength to it the fibers are really strong so we will break this up we throw it through a, a cuisinart like blender and then put it in our dryers and then from there um it gets powdered down so it's a big process um for this gal and gal but as jenna said so worth it. big metabolic yeah. functions huge for digestion probably 
as far as digestion goes and adding a little bit of, um, of, of that, that juice to your, to your digestive tract. And you this know, it's is really, this is really very timely. So I want to, I want to talk a little bit about, about Galangal because one of the things that people ask me all the time is like, where, you know, you talk about this and that, where do, where do I get this from? Right. And, um, and unless you go to an Asian market, most supermarkets do not carry Galangal in the U United States. A few do occasionally, but not most don't. And so the reason why I want to talk about Galangal today, the relevance of it, especially given the virus pandemic is that we are just now finding out that Galangal is the number two. The number one is going to be um, a lemon peel. And I'm going to, hey, you guys, I'm doing a Facebook Live on Friday showing you a recipe how to use uh, lemon peel, how to eat the whole thing. But Galangal is the number two that is what's called the ACE2 receptor uh, blocker. And the ACE2 receptor is where the, that's how the virus gets into the cells and causes all that havoc. And so we've, we've isolated the fact that it is a receptor that um, can be downregulated. And I apologize because in my newsletter, I wrote that it's deregulated. It's actually downregulated. Um, and so that's what kind of protects us in, in a way, in case you are exposed to corona, to COVID-19. Um, Galangal is one of the substances that can actually help to block off the virus from getting into the cell. That's high relevance at this point. And that's, I was so delighted to see that it is the number, uh, number three ingredients in your, in your curry powder. And so, so really awesome, um, you know, really great way of, of adding that in right now at this point. And I just want to show our audience, for those of you guys who have my book, uh, on page 212, there is a recipe for an easy uh, chicken curry stew right there. And instead of using the garam masala and turmeric, what I did was yesterday I made a stew, and instead of using those, I replaced it with the curry blend. And it was way better than the original recipe because of the kefir leaf, the kefir leaf is just, I'm so excited when, like, that was the first thing that popped at me when I opened the jar because, you know, I grew up in Southeast Asia. So Thai food was like staple food for us. Oh, so beautiful. So it's just so vibrant. Um, and so for those of you who love green curry, when you go to a Thai restaurant, the, that's uh, kefir leaf, but that's what gives it like that incredible fragrance. And that's, oh, that's such a thing. Yeah, this morning we were actually um, checking on the kefir life, this kefir lime leaf to see it was if it was done so that we could craft the products and blend them. And they opened up the dehydrators and the entire tea house was like immersed in this beautiful <laughs> effervescence of, of kefir lime. It was it was unbelievable. So yeah, the, the fragrance and 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 the again, you know, when you receive these, your your whole system receives the balance and receives the immune system and, and the and the life force of, of something like kefir lime. Um, so certainly you can you can smell it and taste it in the curry powder. The curry powder we sprinkle, I'm sorry, this one, we sprinkle it on our, our avocados, we sprinkle it on our salad dressings. I would just add, if you were to make a soup, maybe add it on towards the end so that you've you've crafted and you've you've made your soup. And then right before you put it like kind of almost like a gar almost like a like you'd salt and pepper or something, yeah. you would put the curry on right before it hits your mouth so that you're not cooking the mm -hmm. actual herbs, but rather keeping them relatively raw, which is such a, you know, we go through such a challenge to do that um, and make that happen for you all. Our goal as herbalists is really to step away and, and just move the intention from the gardens to all of you um, and just love the plants as we move them through packaging and as we move them through these blends and the dehydrators. We're really just trying to love the plants up um, and really stick, you know, not heat them and, and, and not change them in any way, but rather, tra you know, transmute and, and um, allow you to experience the true intention of the plant medicine. Totally. Uh, by the way, Amy Bath is saying gorgeous and she's actually watching the video right now. So that's really, cool. really sweet. I, uh, uh, we have, um, we have a few questions. And so, hey, you guys, by the way, I posted the link where you can, you can get it. And we, the, we got a special deal for Hormones Balance Community, 15% off. So it's typically like on average about $8 per jar. And if you're getting all three jars, which is the Boringa, the Kari Blend, and the Cacao Olena, then you can save um, as much as 27 bucks on a whole, on a whole um, bundle. And you really don't need a lot to enjoy the medicinal benefits um, of it. So yeah and so the link is right there um you can click on it and, and take a look at the website 
Um, I have a few questions for you guys that's been coming in from our, our newsletters and uh, I see a few on Facebook Live as well. So the first question is, why are you not organic? Um, and if you could explain the difference between the biodynamic farming and organic farming. So um, it's an interesting question for sure. We've had a lot of conversation about it on the farm. Um, we believe ourselves to be a much higher level than organic. I mean, our goal is to be 100% um, sustainable on a, in a closed loop system so that we know exactly where our food for our gardens is actually coming from. Um, at the moment, we do bring in some chips locally. So our, our some of our mulch, um, and we bring in a little bit of, of, of compost from some trimmers as well, tree trimmers. But uh, we have our own work, worm farm um, that we feed our own spinach to, and we also feed our grass clippings. So when we mow the, when we mow the grass, we're, ta we're collecting the grass and feeding it to our worms. Then the worms are composting it through and we're creating our worm castings in that way. Um, I guess, you know, the, the concept of, of organic, although my wife, Jenna and I, we really try and, and eat, or we do eat 100% organic. But what's most important to us is knowing the source. We'd like it to kind of take it to the next level. When we see the word organic plastered on lollipops, we think to ourselves, and I'm kind of stealing her joke, is where is the lollipop tree? Somebody get me the lollipop tree seeds you know, because I've never seen one yet. So what we what we do here is, is full transparency. You know, we want people to be a lot closer to the plants. And we want people to understand the ingredients as whole plants. We don't want them to be broken up and the word organic plastered on things because they're able to move that word through their own personal system. And, and, and when you talk about transparency, you guys do even farm tours as well, showing people exactly how the farm is run, correct? Correct, and, and it's all about connecting with the plants and, and the transparency produces education and trust and again, builds that immune system. So, so the information that's passing through there's nothing unclear about it. It's purely transparent. And it's, it's this message that's so important right now, right? It's, there's so much confusion out there in the world and the ability for us to, to pick our immune system up collectively through truth, right? And, and, and through transparency so that there, are no, there is no mirage, there is no confusion. And supporting the labor and the love that goes into these medicine gardens, that goes into these farms that are scattered across the planet. And they're in California, and they're in Colorado, but, but they're not at the level that's necessary right now. And we're learning that. We're learning where we need to go with the diversity of our plant medicine locally and abroad in order to boost our immune systems. So when we talk about the word organic, and realize that it's on lollipops and cookies and mac and cheese and, and mac and cheese that's not okay they stole the word and now they're forcing it upon us so as a as a business ethically speaking we felt uncomfortable paying the man paying the man that for that for that standard it, it, although it's a catch 22 at the same time we're ready to go beyond that um, and we hope that our transparency um, is clear and biodynamic, biodynamic farming has no um, certification at this point, right? Organic. <laughs> That's so um, funny. <laughs> that, that is true. Um, and again, you know, the certification, it's, un, it's undoubtedly, you know, going to happen that they're going to control that and force farmers to pay for that as well. So our ability to source from people that we know and trust and are able to create the transparency in front of you. And then at the end, as you're immune system and of self-awareness skyrocket, you can actually sniff it all out yourself. You don't need a word to tell you about something. You can sniff it through because your awareness is skyrocketing yeah. as you use plant medicines. So I don't know. Go ahead. Just on that note, because Doug was mentioning the permaculture, the biodynamic farming practices that we do use, you know, a lot of the times amendments that are added to gardens, we don't, we wouldn't know where they come from what was get put in them. Um, and the monocropping that Doug mentioned earlier, it lends itself to a weak immune system in the garden when you have only singular rows of one crop. 
for miles and miles and acres and acres. So what happens is, is the, the gardens, they can't defend themselves. Their immune system is compromised because they don't have the information and the helper plants around them that are also giving them those vital nutrients that they need to thrive. So when you really are thinking about what is going to keep your immune system as healthy as possible, you have to really think, you know, people say, oh, you know, um, you, are, you are what you eat. Well, no, you're not what you eat. You are what your food eats. Hmm. So you really have to look a step beyond that, a step like even further and just say, oh, how, how it is my food eating? What, what nourishment did that get? Because that's going to translate right directly into your own being. Yeah. So um, we're very, very particular. Like Doug said, like this is a plant. I just kind of just grabbed it right here. But this is comfrey leaf. And this is one of those plants that grabs those vital nutrients from really deep down in the soil that the other plants can't get to because it has such an amazing tap root. And then what we do is we, we will either chop and drop and crush these leaves and put them by the base of other trees. And that's feeding that when it compost that feeds the other plants. We also make a tea, not a tea for us to drink, but a compost tea that we feed to the gardens. And that in itself is also nourishing, but in itself, nature doesn't really need us to intervene. We just need to figure out a way to emulate it in a way that we can benefit, but the plants can still thrive. And what we do is we plant our cacao plant, right? Next to our comfrey plant, mm -hmm. next to our kefir lime plant, next to our neoi, our Hawaiian chili plant, and so on and so forth. And when we do this, these plants have a labyrinth of like if you were to rip off the top of the garden and look at these root systems, these root systems are a network of information and they're helping each other. So the magnesium is feeding the K for lime and then the nitrogen is going from the comfrey back into, you know, the ca cacao and so on and so forth. You get the idea. And it's this thriving community, right? They're companion plants that are gonna create the most potent, most vitamin mineral rich plants for us to consume. And so when Doug's talking about using the land in a closed loop system, that's what he means. So any part of the plants that we don't use is actually plants that we use. We just use it to feed back to the plants themselves. You guys, remind me, you guys remind me a bit of that movie that just came out like a year ago, The, the Big Little Farm, I think. The, the Oh, that was a great movie. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to be a farmer when I saw that. And then I really watched it again. And I was like, man, that's a lot of work. And <laughs> <laughs> they, have, they have a lot of animals. No, but we the well, animals that they have. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I know, I know. But you know, but the, the, the point I think is that what I would like to drive home today before we wrap up for today is to, with our audience is that, you know, to be a farmer is bloody hard work. And, and everything you guys are doing, it just sounds simple, but I'm sure you're just there 24, um, like 18, 18, seven or something like that. Right. And yeah, so I just want to, I want to just put my gratitude out to you for the amazing work you're doing. And thank you, Jenna, for like how you explain, um, you know, the correlation, like how, how the plants work together, because in monocrop, I mean, that's, that's one of the things we always are you know, what we always say as our herbalists is that the qualities that the plant has is what, that's what the plant passes on to us, right? So like a good example is schizandra. We always, I always talk about, so one of my favorite plants, right? In Siberia, that, that uh, resistance that it develops to, to the harshness of the climate, it passes it on to us, the resilience. Um, but it's the same thing, what you guys are doing is just like that abundance that you're just passing on to us. So um, so thank you so much for doing this, for doing a demo for us. Um, I just can't wait to go and see you, your farm and just spend like, just plan myself. Like I'm going to pitch a pet tent there for like a week and work for free. <laughs> We're excited for you yeah, to come bring a dog because this is my, this is my little guy and he, he's coming. So <laughs> everyone's welcome. <laughs> um, yeah. So thanks again, you guys. And, um, I don't, Hey, apologize you guys. I don't. Hormone dance community. I can actually cannot see the questions coming in. I know there's a lot of questions, but I just cannot see them live. So uh, what we're gonna do is, is would you guys be okay to like jump on later on the questions and answer them when the is over? We can help. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. 
All right. Have a great rest of the day, you farmers and uh, hormones balance folks. And I will see you on uh, Thursday. I'm going to be doing a special edition on the new things we are learning about coronavirus. And on Friday, I want to do a cooking demo showing you how to make a really amazing syrup with honey, lemon rind, and uh, ginger, and, um, and some uh, turmeric and garlic. Yeah, there we go. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful Thank you. day. Aloha. Bye. Aloha.